as you probably know, I'm a huge Steam Deck fan. I love this thing so much. Uh, and one of my favorite things to do with it is to emulate classic retro games. Now, as much as it pains me to admit, the PS3 and Xbox 360 era are becoming classics at this point. And stuff before that is becoming antiques. That's wild to think about. And while I do have, you know, a retro gaming setup over here with a CRT and everything, uh, some of these consoles are getting so old, especially like the PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox, that uh, they've become too cumbersome to use without having to maintain them. Um, that's why I'm really excited to have emulation on the Steam Deck. And not just any emulation, but really good emulation. And now, as you can see, I've got Burnout 3 running here on uh, PCSX2, which just had a new release. And let me tell you, I've been playing games on PCSX2 version 2, uh, which has been 20 years in the making, and that's bananas to think. Uh, but yeah, this is really, really incredible, and I can't wait to talk about this with you. And one of the great things about PCSX2 is that when they have a release, they do a deep dive blog post into that release and all the features and cool things that are happening with it. Um, so, with that being the case, let's read this article uh, together and we will uh, figure out what's going on with this new release. It's been over four years since the last stable PCSX2 revision released. A lot of things can happen in four years, but we could not have predicted just how much progress would be made in that time. PCSX2 has received over 6,000 changes, passed 100 million downloads, and celebrated its 20th anniversary. I remember when PCSX2 came out. Um, it was a very different beast at the time. It was hard to get games running on it. And I remember there weren't many retail games that you could actually play when it first came out. There are lots of design changes, technical discoveries, and more to discuss. So let's jump right in and get started with the highlights from four years of development. The elephant in the room, PCSX2 enters its cute era. Now, it's called cute. It's pronounced cute. That's the way that uh, the developers intended to be pronounced. At least that's my understanding. However, whenever I read that, because I'm a bit neurodivergent, I say QT, so if I mess up and misspeak and call it QT, uh, just deal with it. Let me know in the comments that I screwed up and give me timestamps too, because I love knowing how wrong I am about things. Uh, you might know the name WX Widgets from its time as PCSX2's choice of GUI, or from other emulators like Dolphin, which used it before migrating to Qt. For a long time, it served us sufficiently well, but its age and implementation began to show rather quickly. Threading issues resulted in deadlocks and race conditions because it was not properly separated from the emulation core. The technical debt started high and only got worse as the project tried to keep moving forward. But now WX Widgets is gone. No more desktop experience reminding you of what Windows desktop apps looked like in 2006. Cute brings with it a slick appearance, more efficient UI backend, and provided the perfect opportunity to redo all our menus and widgets. The addition of themes allows you to customize your PCSX2 to your liking. The result is by far our best user experience to date. Massive thanks to Sten Stenzik <laughs> for bringing his uh, cute expertise from DuckStation and leading the charge on PCSX2's new cute design. And one of the first things I actually noticed about PCSX2 here is the fact that uh, the UI overhaul looked completely, uh, looked very familiar to me. Um, and it was because I've been messing around with DuckStation for quite a while now. Uh, and it's kind of interesting to see, you know, I drew a parallel between the two. Uh, and that's because one of uh, DuckStation's UI developers contributed to PCSX2. That's awesome to see. Saying goodbye to plugins. We've had a good run with plugins, but their time has come. A relic of a simpler time, plugins were once hailed as the solution where there was no single great solution to the challenges of emulation. Don't like one plugin design? Use another. One plugin breaks a game? Use another. But in the modern era where accuracy is paramount and user experience is of ever increasing importance, their limitations, fragmentation of the development space, and antiquated code bases have shown their age. It's time to say goodbye, and Govaniev Y spearheaded this major piece of development. A difficult decision had to be made. How do we get rid of plugins, but keep feature parity with what they once had? 
Getting rid of plugins fixes a number of issues, but it would bring up many more if features or accuracy were lost. A middle ground was reached. Plugin authors were contacted and their code assimilated into the core PCSX2 project. This meant the program could be built out of a single project file. No longer were plugins compiled separately and dynamically linked. You will find that there are a lot of similarities and also a lot of differences in how PCSX2 settings work now. Many common terms and options remain, while others have been upgraded, changed, or removed to keep up with the times. Now look, here's the thing. Uh, I've always disliked the idea of plugins. Um, plugins always felt janky, and uh, as time progressed, sourcing plugins, uh, especially like the non-standard plugins, became really difficult. So for me, this is kind of a big change. This is kind of a good move, in my opinion, uh, for for PCSX2 to take because the, honestly, the time has come. You know, if you don't like it and you know how to write a plugin, well, then you probably know how to modify PCSX2 source code. So I don't see this as a net loss for the community at all. I, I see this as a benefit, especially when it comes to increasing emulation accuracy, which, as they said, is a big deal for them. Simplifying configuration with automatic game fixes. A major priority for the team has been a focus on automation. How many things are there for users to deal with that they really shouldn't need to? The answer was a lot, really a lot. You might recall that our old interface had graphics fixes buried in the graphics plugin, or perhaps the CPU modes, which were handled on their own tabs. Speed hacks had another tab, more graphics settings were on their own, somehow not connected to the plugin. Game fixes, which were somehow supposed to be different from everything else, we could keep going, it was confusing. I can attest to that. Emulating PlayStation 2 games uh, has been the most tedious and the worst part of emulation uh, in my book. So I'm really glad to see that they're simplifying all of this. Uh, but then we had a thought. Since we are already shipping a database file with information on games, why not include more information about what settings a game needs to run correctly? And so PCSX2's new game index was made a reality. It contains a complete list of all known games and with this index, we can now ship pre-configured fixes to ensure your games will automatically run smoothly. You no longer need to remember to enable these graphics fixes every time you switch games. PCSX2 will already know what that game needs and do it for you. That's super exciting news because that's, this is a feature that a lot of other emulators have had uh, for quite a while at this point. Um, again, PCSX2 is 20 years old. Uh, and it's really time that they've caught up with and, and mature uh, to, you know, an actual usable emulator. Not to say that it wasn't usable before, uh, but, you know, usable by the general public, people who, you know, aren't necessarily uh, inculcated in the emulation scene, people who just kind of want to install EmuDeck on their Steam Deck and be able to play PS2 games. I think that this makes a lot of sense for those kind of folks. So it's really good to see here. Goodbye Goldfish Brain, hello per game settings. A longstanding issue from WX Widgets was the burden of changing your settings every time you switched games. Even though automated game fixes have mostly solved this problem on their own, there remain any personal touches you might make. Say you want to run different games at different resolutions, that's still something you have to change every time you switch games, right? Not any longer. PCSX2 now includes per game settings, which are detached from your global settings. The per game settings will always default to inherit from your global settings, but they will allow you to explicitly set a value for one game in particular. Now, if you want to run a game at a higher resolution than the rest, or use specific memory cards for different games, you can set it once in your per game settings and forget about it, which is a huge convenience. And again, a lot of other emulators have done this. Um, so it's great to see them incorporating this feature in PCSX2. The final frontier of compatibility. Game compatibility has always been an odd duck in the PS2 space. For the most part, there aren't nasty surprises keeping games from running. And the number of problematic games relative to those which are fine is extremely low. However, those few problem games continue to be incredibly stubborn. Right now, the list of games which aren't playable has been whittled down to a small handful with servers which have gone offline. 
highly obscure peripherals that no one has replicated in emulation yet, bizarre FPU math causing games to break themselves, or over-engineered engines which would bring even the best PC hardware to a literal crawl if they were emulated correctly. And all that remains of the nothing category is a single game which refuses to boot on Windows. Boot a game in PCSX2 besides that one, and it will at least get you into the menu. Provided no one uncovers any more obscure PS2 games that have been lost to time, it's safe to say PCSX2 has entered the final frontier of compatibility. The challenge now is to get the last few games up and running. Big Picture Mode coming to a TV near you. Couch gamers have been making themselves increasingly known in the emulation space, embracing the thrill and enjoyment of their classic games with the convenience and simplicity of a controller, couch, and a TV comfortably at the other end of the room. PCSX2 classically has been a desktop application, and it's sure handled like one. While those roots haven't been abandoned, what we've done is added the option to pick which experience you'd like to have. PCSX2 now has a big picture mode. Want to use your controller to navigate PCSX2's menus just like on the big screen? Hit the big picture button, or skip the main interface entirely and start PCSX2 directly into big picture mode with a single extra parameter in your shortcut. Using a brand new I'm GUI implementation courtesy of Stenzek, you can boot your games without getting up from the couch and all critical PCSX2 menus now have a, now have a big picture accessible option. There are other parameters too, for things like full screen or closing PCSX2 when you shut down the game. See our documentation for a comprehensive list of CLI arguments uh, that you can add to your shortcut or launchers. Now there's a whole bunch of other things that we could talk about here, but the big things are that they've added Vulkan support, They've improved the sound emulation dramatically. They've improved performance in the uh, graphics department, and they've also improved controller mapping. If you want to check out this entire post for yourself, there's going to be a link down below. Make sure that you check that out for yourself because, you know, I'm really excited about PCSX2, but I think that if you've got the kind of nostalgia for PlayStation 2 games that I have, and you read this post for yourself, you're going to be just about as excited as I am about this. Uh, with that said, I want to know what you think. Have you tried PCSX2 on your Steam Deck? If you go to their website, you can download the release as an app image and run it from uh, your Steam Deck. It's not quite in the Flathub repository yet, uh, which, you know, just waiting for that to hit and then uh, it should be good to go for everybody. But yeah, I want to know what you think. Le leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about uh, the improvements here. This four year development cycle seems to have really paid off for them. So congratulations to the PCSX2 team. But you know what? I think that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you like that smash button. It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this one. And if you do want to see another video about emulation, I did this one about Xbox 360 emulation on the Steam Deck, uh, and that's been pretty popular, so check that out. That's going to do it for now, though. Thanks to my patrons for supporting this show, and I'll see you guys in the next one.